the topic of discussion in the session is the ischemic heart disease. So, ischemic heart disease is one of the very lengthiest topic as well as one of the most important topic for all the licensing examinations of the world. So, I decided to divide the ischemic heart disease into various modules because in this we will discuss about the coronary blood flow, we will discuss about the angina as well as its types and we will also discuss in separate modules uh, about uh, the acute myocardial infarction as well as the sudden cardiac death. So, in this particular module, let us stick to the definition of the ischemic heart disease as well as let us discuss in detail about uh, the coronary artery blood flow. So, what is the ischemic heart disease here? Ischemic heart disease develops mainly because of if there is an imbalance between the myocardial oxygen demand and the supply from the coronary arteries. So, whenever there is an imbalance between the demand as well as supply, then there will be a development of ischemia. For example, if you see myocardium, myocardium means let me talk uh, more precisely about uh, the left ventricular myocardium. So, the left ventricular myocardium pumps the blood into the iota that is approximately 70 ml per beat. This is called as stroke volume and approximately the heart rate under normal resting conditions is 72 beats per minute. So, our myocardium is designed normally to work under normal resting conditions and in some circumstances for example if the person is performing any sternus exercise the force of contraction as well as the heart rate will increase but the heart immediately will like compensate uh, the demand by increasing the force of contraction as well as by increasing the heart rate. For example the compensatory mechanisms will work approximately uh, 180 beats per minute. So, the heart can withstand to supply the oxygen as well as uh, the nutrition to the myocardium until the heart rate is approximately 180 beats per minute. But whenever the heart rate is greater than or equal to 180 beats per minute, then the myocardium needs so much oxygen as well as like glucose to supply to the muscle so that you know it can beat rigorously. And another important point is whenever the uh, heart rate is approximately 180 beats per minute, the diastolic period of the cardiac cycle will be reduced. We must know that the coronary arteries supply its uh, blood to the myocardium during diastolic period of the cardiac cycle which means the filling of the coronary arteries mainly takes place during diastolic period of the cardiac cycle. So, if the heart rate is approximately 180 beats per minute, it limits the filling of the coronary arteries and potentially resulting in ischemia. So, this is how the ischemia develops. So, this is what we need to remember about the basic points about the ischemia of the like uh, myocardium. Now, let us discuss about the coronary arteries, we need to understand uh, which artery is supplying which part of uh, the heart. So, let me start the discussion with the uh, left anterior descending artery over here. So, the left anterior descending artery which is a branch of left coronary artery which distributes uh, its blood mainly to the anterior portion of the left ventricle as well as the anterior two-third of the interventricular septum as well as apex of the heart. So, all the three structures are mainly supplied by the left anterior descending branch of the left coronary artery. Okay? So, we know that apex is the thickest part of the myocardium whenever we see apex is mainly formed by the left ventricle rather than right ventricle. So, apex has thickest myocardium and apex needs 
large amount of blood supply that's the reason the left anterior descending artery is one of the very very important artery to supply oxygen to the myocardium so the left anterior descending coronary artery remember that it is the site of uh, thrombosis approximately in 40 to 50 percent of the cases right so left anterior descending coronary artery is very very important artery over here next is the right coronary artery so if we talk about the distribution of the right coronary artery over here it supplies the posterior basal wall of the left ventricle and also it supplies uh, the posterior one third of the interventricular septum because the anterior two third of the interventricular septum is supplied by the left anterior descending coronary artery and posterior one third of the interventricular septum is supplied by the right coronary artery but sometimes it is also perfused by the left circumflex coronary artery which is also a branch of left coronary artery and it also supplies uh, right ventricle in approximately 80 percent of the individuals and it also gives its blood supply to the postero medial papillary muscle in the left ventricle and it supplies atrioventricular as well as sinoatrial nodes so sa node as well as av node is also supplied by right coronary artery this is very very important mcq point so remember that sa node as well as av node both are supplied by the right coronary artery and the right coronary artery is the site for 30 to 40 percent of coronary artery thrombosis so it is the second most common after left anterior descending artery so now the next one is left circumflex coronary artery so this left circumflex coronary artery supplies the lateral wall of the left ventricle in 80 percent of the individuals and it is the site for 15 to 20 percent of the coronary artery thrombosis so it is the third most common after lad after right coronary artery and next is the circumflex artery so whenever there is a slow reduction in the blood flow slow reduction in the blood flow means for example if you can see the coronary artery over here if there is atherosclerosis of the coronary artery so there will be a narrowing of the arteries because of the development of the atherosclerotic plaque as the atherosclerosis grows there will be a gradual as well as progressive narrowing of the coronary arteries which may lead to the formation of the collateral circulation right so this particular collateral circulation which is formed because of the progressive as well as a gradual decrease in the blood supply so is uh, uh, prevents the development of uh, acute myocardial infarction as well as uh, the development of angina so the collateral circulation has a protective effect on preventing acute myocardial infarction but sometimes what happens is if uh, the atherosclerotic uh, plaque is uh, much greater for example if it obstructs the lumen greater than 90 percent of the cases then there is a greater chance for the development of uh, acute myocardial infarction so this is the basic idea what you need to know uh, to understand the pathology of uh, the ischemic heart disease. So by this, we concluded the topic of the coronary arteries.